Hello guys, so we are starting renal organ system. What we will be doing is that we will follow the framework present in the first aid. So the first aid is a is a, a decent structure to follow, but at the same time uh, it is a good very good review book. It does not clear some of the concepts which are needed to actually retain and recall at the time of USMLE examinations. So this idea really is to pick up the structure of the first aid and then start explaining various topics on it. So I have the first aid book near me over here and the very first topic which it really is uh, I think one third of the first page of the first, uh, first aid for renal is the body volumes. So we will start with the body volumes and the fluid body compartments in the fluid volume in those compartments and what does that mean. Please remember this that as a practicing doctor you will be handling the patient's um, fluid volumes and in, the, in various compartments and this could actually determine if the patient is going to survive or not. So it is a very, very important topic to understand and many times the doctors usually or the students become a little scared from the calculations involved in the body volumes. So me being a doctor as well, uh, I would share the same fear too, but I think that we can um, figure out at least the functional parts of that and we can uh, work through the calculations. So uh, without further delay, let us start talking about the body volumes or the compartments. So this is really part of the renal organ system, what we will do is we will do physiology, then we will do pathology of the kidneys or the renal system and then we will do pharmacology. So I am hoping that within 10 hours of lectures one organ system will be taken care of. We have about 11 organ systems to study. So about 110 hours and we would be done with the uh, physiology, pathology and pharmacology of various organ systems. So um, the body fluids, now my reference books are, I am looking at the first aid as a structure, um, Guyton is my primary reference book. I am looking at Kaplan as well, I have looked at the board review series too and then some other uh, books like pretest and those. So, but Guyton would stay you know, as my primary uh, reference book for, for our discussion and I would try to actually elaborate the examples and, and calculations from Guyton as well so you can go ahead and uh, see them over there. All right, so talking about body fluids. So what we have is that, um, so this is a very common thing which people say that if we have a cell, so let us say this is a cell, if we have a cell and I will make a nucleus somewhere over here and if we look at the evolution, cells evolve from single, uh, we evolve from single cellular um, uh, entities or animals or species or creatures and then we evolved into larger cellular systems. So this cell at some point used to live in an ocean. Uh, we have about 74 trillion such cells which have then formed together and are interacting together and are making us the humans which we are. So a cell which lives in the ocean used to be immersed in the ocean water, correct? So this is a very common uh, misconception which I have been hearing and I read in the books and uh, multiple teachers have heard them saying that the cells have, our body cells have tried to keep their external environment the same as it was when we used to live in the oceans. So what that means is that the external environment around the cell, that little piece of ocean which a cell is keeping around it should be similar to the ocean water, right? So 
understand this that the ocean water's osmolality is normally or osmolarity is normally more than 2000 milliosmoles. And do not worry, we will talk about what milliosmoles are and what osmoles are and how to calculate the osmolarity. I just want to make an important point that ocean water's osmolarity is greater than 2000 milliosmoles. The osmolarity around the cell in our extracellular fluid is really about 290 milliosmoles, 286 to 300 something milliosmoles. So, this is nowhere near the osmolarity which is in the ocean water. So, it is sort of a misconception, it is a, it's a fun thing to remember that we have, hey we have a little piece of ocean within our body and that is what our cells are immersed in and they are enjoying the same environment as we used to have when we were single cellular species. But really the osmolarity here is much different or lesser than the ocean water osmolarity and that is why we actually if we are in the ocean, we cannot just use the ocean water as our uh, source of uh, water intake. All right, so keeping this one concept clear that it is really not the ocean water, then the question would really become, so if it is not the ocean water, what is it? Why do we have the extracellular fluid which is a different composition than the intracellular fluid and then what do we have in the vessels? So, before we embark on that journey, please remember we will come back to this concept. The concept is going to be the Donnan effect. So, we will come back to that concept as part of this lecture, but let us establish something. The, what the most important thing to establish in our discussion is going to be this. So, we will establish that we have three we have three primary fluid compartments or three primary compartments which have different fluid compositions. That, that is what we are going to establish. So, I have established one this little cell, no nucleus, no other uh, bodies are present in here. This is just a um, cell present. I can call this everything inside here. I can call that as intracellular. So, of course, we are talking about the fluids. So, the fluid which is present in here will be called intracellular fluid, correct? Now, outside the cell, so you can say that body is primarily divided into two type of compartments. Intracellular fluid, that is all the fluid present. So, again, the context is fluid compartments. So, we have two primary fluid compartments, fluid present inside the cell that would be intracellular fluid and then fluid present outside the cell that would be the extracellular fluid. So, two primary compartments, I am going to make here, this is our extracellular fluid compartment. Okay. So, what we will do is we have now intracellular fluid compartment, everything outside these cells is the extracellular fluid compartment. In our little graph or little chart or little diagram, we will show it as intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, I am making it on a side. Now, another very important thing to understand is that extracellular fluid then, the extracellular fluid compartment then in turn is divided into into the uh, interstitial, interstitial and intravascular. So, if we go here for a second, what we have is we have body fluid compartments, which are going to be two primary compartments, compartments we will have intracellular fluid compartment. So, that is this fluid compartment which is, which contains the fluid present inside 74 trillion cells. Interestingly, very important thing, interestingly the composition of the fluid inside the cells is so 